Hey guys, Ivan here. So in this video we have a couple of very interesting bodybuilding topics. First we're gonna check out what Hunter Labrada looks like right now and this video was taken actually on his vacation or whatever he's doing over there in Jordan. So he's not at home, so he's probably not doing everything perfectly, but he's still hitting the gym and I'm assuming he's eating like more junk food than usual, so he filled out nicely and in this video he looks probably bigger and fuller than I've ever seen him and it looks like he made some serious progress. Here is also the most recent video that he posted, he's probably at home right here because he's training with his father and as you can see right here in this update, yeah, he looks, he looks impressive, he definitely looks like he improved. What could be the reason of this improvement, you're probably wondering, well, there is an answer. I'm sure most of you guys know at this point that Hunter is kind of, he has been known for drinking his meals rather than eating them. And I'm saying meals, I'm not saying shakes. Well, he's making them shakes, but really this is chicken and rice and stuff like that. So literally he's blending the, the meat and the carb sources and he's adding water and he's drinking most of his meals. Like you could watch his YouTube videos or read his Instagram posts and like half of his meals were actually whey protein powder. The other half would be meats, but he would blend most of them and just drink them, which I don't know if it is good or bad. I mean, he did get to being fourth in the Mr. Olympia last year, actually year before last which means it obviously worked to a point. He did receive a lot of criticism, a lot of flashback for doing that stuff, but apparently after he did the last year's Mr. Olympian, he ended up, I don't know where, 7, 8, 9, something like that. He did not progress from previous year. He didn't even stay in that top 4 or top 5. He digressed in placement. Ever since then, he, he started working harder, he changed a couple of things and one of those changes that he made was actually starting to eat freaking meals rather than drinking protein powder and blending his meats. And this was actually confirmed by his coach, Ben Chow. Check this out. You know, according to Ben, he's gone from, you know, drinking his meals to eating his meals. And we saw him at the mm -hmm. Arnold carrying around his meals. So there you go. That is a big change in Hunter's life, in Hunter's career. I mean, after not doing as well as he probably hoped to do at the Olympia, he decided to bring things up to another level to make it even harder, to work even harder than he did so far. I mean, it got him to be fourth, the way he was doing things before. He was fourth at the Mr. Olympia, fourth in the world, which is a great success. And at that point, there was no reason to really change things. But now that he dropped three spots, actually, he was seventh at the Mr. Olympia, that he fell from fourth to seventh, that he was beaten by some guys who he was beating last year. And there are some new guys who came in who actually did better than him. He decided it is time for a change, it is time to do something different, to try to work harder and for him in his situation that would be stopping the, the meal shakes and actually eating the food like I'm sure all of the guys who beat him in the Mr. Olympia are doing and I think we are already able to see the results from this, he is looking bigger, fuller, rounder, overall better than he ever was before. I'm not sure which show he's doing, but he needs to do a show to qualify for the Mr. Olympia. Uh, we'll see which show it's gonna be, maybe it's gonna be Toronto Pro and we're gonna watch Ian Valier versus Hunter Labrada once again, I hope that's gonna be it. Maybe these guys are gonna clash at one of these shows. We'll see, but one thing is for sure, it's gonna be a very interesting season because so many great guys weren't able to qualify at the Olympia because the lineup was so, so deep and only five guys are qualified and there are 30 or 31 other guys who did not qualify and most of them are really good bodybuilders. Hunter is the only guy in that top seven who did not qualify yet, so Samson qualified by winning the Arnold and the next in line is Hunter, so he's kind of the favorite to win whichever show he does. And based on what he looks like right now, he is one of the favorites to win whichever show he decides to do. I don't know what Andrew Jack is gonna do, I mean, based on his post, he kind of said like he's gonna take some time off. He was third at the Arnold, but there are no more points, if you guys forgot, there is no point system anymore. So he did not receive any points for being third, and I don't think third is automatic qualification, so he also needs to qualify if he wants to do the Olympia, which I don't know if he's gonna do, I mean, he kind of sounded like he's gonna take some time off. So in all of these shows, 
Hunter is definitely one of the favorites to win, whichever he decides to do. And then next in line are guys like Ian, like Rafael Brando, like Michael Crizio. So it's gonna be a hell of a year, man. Bonac as well. It's gonna be a very, very interesting year. We'll see what's gonna happen, but Hunter looks amazing right now. And I'm sure he's gonna qualify for the Olympia. And when he does it, is he gonna be able to crack the top five again? I think it's very possible, but... I'm not so sure, it's gonna be really tough because the top 5 is really tough to crack these days. I mean, that's Heide Japan, uh, Derek Lansford, uh, Samson Dowd, and Nick Walker, and then there are like Big Remy and Andrew Jack, and that's where I can potentially see Hunter slipping in. So I can definitely imagine him cracking a top 5 at the Olympia, but we'll see. We'll see how much he will progress in that time. If you guys are enjoying my content, you can support me by buying one of the old school lab supplements. For example, Blast Max, uh, it is a pre-workout. There is also Vintage Blast, but this new Vintage Blast Max is a little bit stronger. I don't know how crazy you are, but like right now when I'm prepping for the show, I need something really strong. And this really helps me with a pump, with better focus. It's a really good pre-workout, man, I'm telling you, Blast Max. So if you guys want to try it out, just use the code even, it will get you 15% discount and there is a link down below which you can just click on. And once again guys, if you're enjoying this content, you want to show some appreciation, this is the way to do it, buy any of the supplements and use the code even. Thank you guys. Alright, the next topic is rather interesting. Do you guys recognize this bodybuilder? Oops, man's physique guy. Or is he a bodybuilder? Well, I'm sure you don't, maybe you do, but... The thing is, this guy competed in men's physique last year. Yes, last year. And this is what he looked like. So he definitely didn't look like what the men's physique used to look like when it started back in the day. So in one year, this guy went from being a men's physique competitor to turning pro in open bodybuilding. Yeah, in one year. And it's not that he really made that much progress, that he gained so much muscle. I mean, he definitely did progress, but my point is the division, the men's physique division. How big these guys are nowadays. Like, they are able to turn pro in open bodybuilding, not classic, not 212. Open bodybuilding. This guy became an IFBB pro in men's open bodybuilding in one year, which I think is absolutely insane. This is not the case over here where I compete in IFBB, in European IFBB. In MPC or IFBB Pro League, there is basically no limit how big you can get for men's physique. Like, it's all about having small waist, nice abs, nice chest but you can get pretty much as big as you want, like you can have uh, like 22 inch arms if you want. Now the thing is, over here in IFBB, if you are a little bit overly muscular, they mark you down, you don't place well. If you are, even if you are super conditioned, you're gonna lose. Even if you have beautiful shape and the other guy is not as conditioned, he has worse shape, but you are just overly muscular, you're gonna get marked down and that's, that's the proper judging if you ask me. In MPC or IFB Pro League, I think it went a little bit too far. Now, if the judges want this, if the federation wants this, if they want the men's physique guys to be just bodybuilders who don't show off their legs or don't pose, I mean, that's okay if that's what they want. But that's not what this division was about when it started, when it was created. It was about being, uh, having a beach body, you know, having a streamlined physique, having a physique that most people would just love to have. Like, all people who don't even lift, who don't follow bodybuilding. But apparently, it went to a point where in one year, a man's physique competitor can just turn pro in open bodybuilding. And I thought this was, this was a great story. I mean, this guy, this Indian bodybuilder just turned pro in bodybuilding. And I congratulate him for that. Like, that's a great success. But, like, the point I'm trying to make is, what is man's physique? What is the distinction between man's physique and bodybuilding? Is it simply not showing legs and not posing, but looking as big, as muscular, as freaky as you want? So, definitely interesting topic to discuss. Tell me your thoughts, guys, down below in the comment section. Alright, also we have a physique update of Regan Grimes, who is right now about 15-16 weeks out. His goal, as he said in that previous post, was to try and to progress during the prep. So his starting point when he started prepping was 300 pounds, which really isn't that heavy for a guy of his height. You have Quinton Araya, who is 
350 pounds. Like, that makes more sense. Now, Regan, he didn't get that big, but he said that he wants to grow into the show, kind of. And in this update, I think he looks bigger than ever. Like, maybe the scale is not showing that, he's not telling us that, but the photos, I mean, this photo in particular, looks really freaky. He looks really big. I mean, considering that this guy competed in classic physique only a couple of years ago, he definitely did make a lot of progress. Which show is in 15 or 16 weeks? You guys can calculate that and check out the IVB calendar and tell us down below in the comment section. I didn't bother to do it. We're gonna find out which show it is anyways. He's probably gonna write about it. He's probably gonna tell us which show he's doing. But yeah, his prep is going well, I would say. I mean, 16 weeks out, his conditioning looks okay. He looks a little bit watery. He definitely does look really full, really big. And, uh, I mean, he says he wants to grow into the show. What is... How can you grow into the show? I think there is only one way to do it. If you have been training and, and eating properly during the off-season, and I'm sure he did do that because he looks like he did, the only way that I can imagine him actually growing into the show is if he kept his doses very low and he ups the gear, like, big time during the prep. So, if he does that, then he can actually make some serious changes like serious positive changes you know get harder and, and just look bigger and not lose that much weight but for his height he needs to be like if he wants to be like a top five guy at the olympia which is i believe his potential he needs to be like i don't know man at least 275 or something like that uh, is he gonna does he have only 25 pounds to lose i don't think so but we'll see if he is like 260 something that can also be very competitive. Is he going to be able to win a show and qualify for the, for the Olympia? Well, he did that before, so I, I'm pretty sure he can. But can he be top 5 this year? I don't see that. I think he needs to grow a lot more muscle to fill out his frame enough to be competitive against the freaks like Derek, Huddy, Nick or Samson. But right now, he does look very good. 16-15 weeks out. It's going to be interesting to follow his prep and to see where he's going to land. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And once again, if you wanna support me and my channel, you can just do that by buying one of the old school lab supplements and using the code EVAN. Just use the code EVAN and you get a 15% discount. Thank you guys so much. All the best and bye-bye.